Hello, I'm Fan Wang, Professor of Neurobiology at Duke University. I'm Li Feng, a graduate student in Fan Wang's lab. I'm Lu Pingying, a postdoc in Fan's lab. Like all neuroscientists, we are fascinated about how general anesthesia works. How does it induce and keep the brain in the unconscious state? And there are many chemically extremely diverse types of general anesthetics that all can produce the unconscious state. Interestingly, sleep is a natural occurring unconscious state. Notably, all anesthetized brain and the sleeping brain share a common feature, that is a high amplitude electrical oscillation at a slow frequency range, the so-called slow wave oscillation. This shared common feature led us to postulate the existence of a common neural substrate, and we further hypothesized this common neural substrate consists of neurons that are activated by general anesthetics. Indeed, we discover a spatial group of neurons located in the very bottom of the brain that can be activated by general anesthesia, either using neuronal activity marker for sustaining or in vivo electrophysiology recordings. We name this distinct population of cells anesthesia activated neurons, or AANs. The majority of AANs sit on a tiny spot of the brain, supraoptic nucleus. There are also a sparse population of AANs scattered around its nearby area. The entire set of the neurons located within the hypothalamus, a master regulator of our bodily homeostasis and hormone release. We further performed wholesale patrochamer recording on AANs. It turned out that AANs can be depolarized by multiple distinct anesthetics widely used in clinical and research settings, including isoflurane, propofol, ketaminzalazine, and dexmedetomidine, consistent with our full staining and in vivo recording results. Using in-situ hybridization, we further uncovered that AAN express multiple neuropeptides and hormones, including vasopressin, dynofen, and galenine. Next, we wanted to selectively manipulate these anesthesia-activated neurons and observe the consequence on animal behaviors. To achieve this goal, we employ a viral genetic strategy called KING, capturing activate neuronal ensemble that our lab previously developed that can be used to express any desired gene in false positive neurons. Here, with KIN technology, we specifically delivered either fluorescent markers or common genetic and optogenetic actuators into these anesthesia-activated neurons. We want to artificially activate ANs by selectively expressing either an engineered receptor called HM3DQ or a ligated cation channel, channel rhodopsin, we are able to activate the ANs with a chemical ligand CNOs that works on the HM3DQ receptors or with a pulse of a blue line. To monitor the effects on artificially activating ANs on brain state, we perform simultaneous EEG and EMG recording. Remarkably, once we activate AAN, mice stop moving around. Their brain state change from wakefulness into a deep sleep categorized by a sl strong slow wave oscillation. Even a brief AN activation can potentiate subsequent sleep. On the other hand, if we apply these AANs, mice reduce total sleep time, they have fragmented sleep, and even when they go into sleep, their brain should diminish in slow wave oscillation. Furthermore, we also investigated the function role of AANs during general anesthesia. By selectively expressing other channel reduction to active their cells, or by expressing a ligated proton pump, ERG3.0, to turn off their cells with light, we bidirectionally manipulated AN activity during anesthesia. In control animals expressing only DLP, we applied general anesthetics and measured duration animals stay under unconsciousness. We discovered that the animals stayed in the unconscious state longer after we briefly activated AANs. In contrast, animals emerged from anesthesia quicker if we inhibit those cells. In conclusion, AANs represent a common neural substrate for general anesthesia and sleep and function to maintain or prolong the unconscious or the sleep state. One of the most surprising discoveries of this study is that the majority of AANs 
are vasopressin dynorphin expressing neuroendocrine cells in the supraoptic nucleus. It turns out that neuroendocrine cells not only release peptide hormones into the circulation through their axonal projections to posterior pituitary, they also release large amount of peptides through massive dendritic release into the hypothalamus and to the cerebrospinal fluid. We speculate that neuropeptide signaling can last longer and that through the cerebrospinal fluid, they can spread across the whole brain and therefore may be ideally suited to maintain the global brain network in an unconscious state.